Hi there, from the imperial town at the shores of the Perfume River. So I took a domestic flight yesterday from Saigon to get here. This is the city of Hue in central Vietnam. So it was about, I think, 800 kilometers. And this is also the most northern point of my journey. It is a little bit cooler here, but still temperatures get up to 30 degrees, 31 degrees every day. It's a much smaller city than Saigon, but still has about 500,000 inhabitants. And yeah, this is the Perfume River. It's a huge river. I would say it's about 400 meters wide. But the interesting thing is that it's only 30 kilometers long. So it originates over there. I'm not sure if you can see that. There are these mountains. Basically, this town has two parts. There is the southern part, south of the river. This is where I stay. It is, I have noticed this yesterday when I came here. It is very touristy. There's a lot of restaurants, bars and things like that. A lot of things going on, a lot of people. And uh, when you go over the bridge, you get to the northern part and that is the more historical part. And this is what I'm going to check out today. I will have a look at the main historical site, the Imperial City, which should be right over there. Let's get over that bridge. You have these tourist boats everywhere on the river. <coughs> and I think I have been asked about 20 times by now if I want to take a boat tour. So the place is very touristy, but I would say it's touristy in a, in a good way. So the kind of tourism I don't like is when, uh, when the tourists are in their ghetto, have no contact with the locals, and everything is separated, but this is different. So most of the tourists here actually are domestic tourists. Crossing the canal now to get through one of the gates of the citadel. So maybe at this point I need to explain a little bit. So this town Hue has been the capital of Vietnam between 1800 and 1945 and that was the time of the Nguyen dynasty of emperors and interestingly it was also at the same time when this country was a French colony so somehow they seem to have cooperated with the French One of the canals here that surround the citadel, which is where the imperial city is located. People here in Asia not just take selfies like we Westerners, they actually dress up wearing historical clothes or traditional clothes and put a lot of work into into their selfies when they are traveling around
But actually, it's only the women. Men don't do this, even in Asia. Ticket price was 200,000 dong, which is about 8 euros. Would be a bargain in places like Italy, but here it seems to be quite a high entrance fee. But on the other hand, this area is huge and there are definitely lots of things to see. Unfortunately, part of these palaces have been destroyed in the war. The whole area is about a square kilometer, I would expect. And if I understand it correctly, it has been, it has been modeled after the Emperor's Palace in Beijing, China. I just heard that this is something like a building where the coronations took place. This is one of the buildings that have been destroyed in the war and as you can see it's still being renovated. Okay. I assume that this is where the coronations actually took place. What's that? Historical barbell? Maybe the barbell of the emperor. Well, it's not that heavy. It's a model of the whole area with the entrance and the front. And currently I seem to be about here. I think this is a part of the area where most tourists don't even go. So, as I said, this is really huge and you can actually spend multiple days if you really want to explore everything. which I didn't really even ex expect here just went aside away from where all the tourists go and actually thought there was probably nothing special but look at that Just wondering what that is. It's probably natural. So it looks like some stalactites or something like that from a cave. There actually is the largest cave of the world. Only 
about 100 kilometers from here. Talking about this cave, why didn't I go there? Because I'm actually interested in geology, but you cannot go there just like that. Only if you participate in an expedition. This involves multiple days of hiking um, and it costs about 3,000 euros at least and this was not really in my budget. Another place that is not perfectly renovated but you know this is not really a rich country but they really do their best in restoring their historical sites and this is really a huge area. I assume that this is the main emperor's palace behind this pagoda. And it seems you can go inside. It's going to be interesting. Look at some of the details here. of Herendi porcelain, maybe. The interior actually is not that exciting, I have to say, but you have to know, and I already said that most of this has been destroyed in the war, so it's clear that many of the rooms are just empty.
and at the back of the palace we have a garden with some bonsai trees. They are really taking their time for their for their selfies. Look at the worst dressed guy in this location. Another place off the main tourist trail, the Choha Garden. Same here, when you go into a Buddhist temple, you have to take off your shoes. The difference is that unlike Thailand, it looks like I can go in there with shorts. You can light these sticks here for some reason. This is another Buddhist temple, but for some reason, here you don't need to take off your shoes, maybe because it's not that famous. Maybe because it's not really in use, I don't know. And you can also film here. Back at the entrance gate, I spent about three, three and a half hours here. And by far, I haven't seen everything. Here you can see again a model of how this area looked like 100 years ago. So, one thing I really liked, aside from it being an amazing place, is that you can basically go anywhere, do whatever you want. There are practically no guards standing or sitting around telling you what to do and what not to do. The only issue I had was uh, when I was filming in this Buddhist temple, I actually didn't know that it's not allowed. I have filmed in some Buddhist temples, for example in Bangkok, and there it was no issue, but that's okay. But aside from that, you can really walk around and do whatever you want. Okay, let's go on.
So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do next. Maybe have lunch first. Uh, maybe visit one of the famous pagodas. So I just ordered a random dish in a restaurant. Far away from the tourist trains. I have no idea what it is. Some kind of salad. Let's give it a try. So, <coughs> looks like what I just ordered is jellyfish salad. Interesting, it has actually, the jellyfish has no taste, but it's actually quite good with the spices which I added. So, <coughs> at least I ate more than half of it. It's actually not bad. The jellyfish is actually a bit crunchy, interestingly. But I have to tell you I don't want to eat all of it because I don't know if my stomach can handle it. <clears throat> okay, let's go. That was quite exotic. I actually feel like a real food blogger right now. Now, um, it actually was quite good. I mean, the jellyfish doesn't have any taste at all, if you ask me. Um, but with the spices and the herbs, it was quite good. The only reason why I only ate half of it is I actually don't know how my stomach will react. You know, that is kind of, at least kind of raw seafood of a kind I haven't tried before and which I didn't even know that you can eat it. So let's hope for the best. I'm now three kilometers outside the city center walking towards one of the famous pagodas. This is something Vietnamese people would probably never do. They take their motorbikes for everything, say, more than 100 meters. But interestingly, still, they don't get fat. Okay, so let me tell you something more about the Perfume River here. So the reason why it's called the Perfume River is because it supposedly has a good smell. Well, at least it doesn't stink. But I think this is mainly in autumn when uh, the flowers of certain plants upstream uh, float through the river and make the water uh, fragrant. At least that's what's being told. Another legend about Hue is that well, it's, uh, it's, it counts as the culinary center of Vietnam. So it's being said that it has the best cuisine. And uh, the reason, according to the legend, is that the emperor wanted his cooks to invent a new meal every day. So that should be the reason why. I'm not sure if it's true, but it's a nice story. And entering the tourist zone once again. So this is where this pagoda seems to be. Didn't find the pagoda itself too impressive, but 
We have a nice garden behind it with lots of bonsai trees. That's 150, no, right? No, 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 I'm sorry. No? No, no. Ah, okay. No? Outside, okay. Outside. Uh, just, no, to the city center. To the city center. Okay. Outside. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, outside. Outside, okay. Okay, good. Good? Okay. Okay. So, wondering how that will work. But. I actually think it's better to sit outside than inside this boat, which would be a little bit boring. my hotel for now I think that's it for today gonna do another video in the evening I think uh, about the nightlife scene but this will be an extra video otherwise it's gonna get too long so bye bye hope to see you next time